Welcome back. I'll be looking at how we can analyze frames and ANSYS. Hopefully you saw the previous video where we did the FE formulation of frames in MathCAD, uh, but now we'll be looking at how we can do that in ANSYS. All right, so the beam element we'll be using is beam 188, and this is the beam element that's uh, kind of put a bunch of beam elements under about, right again, around 2010. Uh, in ANSYS, and so if you have an older book, it might say beam 3, but anyways, beam 28 is the 3D beam element. Because it's 3D, we now have 6 degrees of freedom, uh, not just uh, the 3 that we were looking at in the FE formulation. So we have X translation, X, Y, and Z translation, X, Y, and Z rotation, whereas normally, or at least what we did with our FE formulation, we looked at just X and Y rota uh, translation and rotation about the Z axis. All right, so the input data we need for the beam 188 are node location, we need to know where it's located. We need to know the cross-sectional area. Uh, so if we want to calculate the uh, stress due to uh, a loading, uh, if we want to determine the stress due to moment, we need the moment of inertia, I. We also need a cross-sectional height, or C. Uh, C comes in with H over 2. And we need the modulus of elasticity for converting from deflection to stress. So we need to insert all those uh, values. I also want to be sure to verify your results. Um, two options. For example, we can pass a cutting through the member and find internal loads or stress using statics. And again, you can go back to the presentation to see that information. Uh, also find reactions using statics. So here's an example we're going to be looking at. It's an overhang frame. Uh, it's steel. And specifically, the IBM we're going to be using is W1226. And that'll come into, into play here. The modulus there is 30 times 10 to the sixth. Uh, area is 7.65 inches squared. A moment ratio of 204, 204 inches to the fourth power. We'll be looking for deformation as well. Some other things I'll, look, uh, I'll talk to you about how we can solve for those ANSYS. All right, so let's get into that. We'll get over here to ANSYS. Uh, I thought I had ANSYS. I don't know. Let me get it up here. APDL. All right, there we go. All right, so we'll zoom this in here. All right, so let's uh, create a title here. So change title to Frame 2D. And click OK here. We're going to Preferences. Uh, narrow our stuff down to just looking at structural items. Go to Preprocess. Search start like normal. Go to Element Type. Add a Delete. Add. And here we're going to Beam 188. And we'll click OK on that. New thing here, we're going to do Options. Go in here to Options. And I come down here to element behavior. So when we did the uh, the assume solution for beams specifically, so the FE formulation of beams, the, we did an assume solution using a third order polynomial or a cubic form. So that's where this is coming into play. So what does the deflection look like between nodes? Is it linear? Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? So we go up to cubic. It's more computational time, but we're looking at really simple frames here. So cubic is a great way to get accuracy, um, and our computational time shouldn't be that much longer. So we'll click OK on that and close. We'll go into real constants. We'll do add, edit, delete, and add. And OK here. B money A does not require real constants. So what we've done here normally is we would have put in the cross-sectional area. And we're actually going to do that in a different way with a uh, frame. And you'll see what that is here in just a bit. So we'll close out of that. Instead, we'll go to material properties, material models, and we'll go structural, linear, elastic, isotropic. And that's our 30E6 and 0.3 for the Poisson's ratio. So click OK on that. Close that. And go into section. Now, this is the new piece here. We'll go into sections. We're going to do a beam. And we're going to do common sections of beams. And if we change the subtype from this uh, block cross section to more of an I beam cross section, that's what we're interested in looking at. So, this is where you would have to look up your W1226. And figure out what these values are for the different things. So I've already done this. I have this in the back of one of my books. And you can either check it up online. I'm sure it's available there. Uh, or in the back of one of your books. So W1, that's our flange width. And that's going to be the same for W1 and W2. It's 6.49. And this is in inches. So we're locking in inches as our dimension here. Uh, W3 is our depth. That will be 12.22 inches. Uh, T1 is our flange thickness. 0 0.38, and it's the same for T T2. And T3 is our web thickness at 0 0.23. Uh, looks good, so we'll apply that. 
Uh, see what these other things are here. So click on preview. You can see what your I-beam looks like overall. And mesh view, you can kind of see it breaks up into, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements. I'm going to crank up to find and then look at mesh view again. You can see the additional elements that it creates here. We're going to go ahead with this again. Coarse versus fine. Uh, it's going to be more computationally expensive, but you get a little bit better accuracy as you go up. Uh, hence, fine versus coarse. So, uh, again, we're doing very simplistic, so it works out well for us. Oh, by the way, the area right here, 7.5, uh, inches squared, and moment of inertia, 12 point, or 201 versus or 202 versus 204, which we had in the slide. So, so those are our calculated for us based on the dimensions we put in for the I-beam. So we'll click OK on that. Uh, let's uh, get ready to do our nodes now. So we'll go to work plane and we'll set that up. We're going to do the grid and triad. Change our snack increment to 12 inches, spacing 12 inches. Go from 0 to 120. And go ahead and click OK there. Let's uh, display our working plane. And it's going to be on top of our uh, beam here. So let's go over to plot and replot. Get rid of that. All right, so let's zoom out now. Zoom out a bunch here. Pan over, move down here, maybe zoom in a notch there. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, pan over one more. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's go here now from sections to modeling. We'll create nodes on working plane. And we're going to do, I think it was up nine feet. Yep, up nine feet and over 10 feet. So we'll go up nine feet for node one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over 10 feet. And then down here for node three. And middle click that to confirm it. And click OK. So we got the nodes in there. Let's do the elements. So go click on elements, auto number through nodes. And just click on node one and two and middle click to confirm. And then two to three, middle click to confirm and click OK. Looks good there. Let's get rid of that working plane so we can see what's going on here. And let's turn on some numbering, turn on the node numbers and some element numbers. Click OK, and then back to Plot and Elements. And then we got our elements and our node numbers. And it looks like a little hidden there. Um, you know, let's maybe just zoom out a notch here so we can see a little bit better. There we go. All right, so we got uh, nodes, elements defined. We're ready for boundary conditions and loads. All right, so come down here to Solution, Define Loads, Apply Structural Displacement on Nodes. And we got Node 1 and Node 3 locked in. So again, just going back here to the image. So we're locked in here and we're locked in over here. So we'll go select node one and node three, middle click to confirm. All degrees of freedom are zero. We'll click on OK. Uh, new one now for our load. Our load is distributed load. All right? So another place you can think about a distributed load that happens is a pressure. All right? So that's what we're going to use in ANSYS. We're going to use pressure down here. So we're still in Apply menu, Apply Pressure, and we do Pressure on a Beam. So click on that, and we'll come up here, click on our Beam, middle click to Confirm. And the load key that we're going to use is 2. The reason for 2 is it indicates a direction is downward uh, in the Y direction. And we're going to need to put in the value here. Now, so remember we're in inches is our units, pounds are our force. And if we go back to our slideshow, we see that this is 800 pounds per foot not per inch. So let's bring up our calculator. And if we take 800, we take 800 and we divide by 12, we get 66.6. Let's call it 7 and round it off there. All right, so we'll close that and go back to our ANSYS. And we go 66.67. All right, again, we're not putting a negative here because that 2, that load key of 2 indicates the negative Y direction. Now this says pressured value node I. Look what happens here. So pressured node J. We could put the same thing there, but at least notice it here. Leave blank for uniform pressure. So we have uniform pressure across our whole beam element. We can just put it in there at node I and, and leave J blank. So we'll do that. And we'll click OK. And you can see where it shows up there. That all looks good. So we'll just come down here to solve. We got let's just think of boundary conditions. We got loads applied. Yeah, we should get everything. So we'll solve. Current LS, OK, close, close. I probably should have saved DB way back when, but I'll do it now. All right, so that's what we got here. Let's look at a nice little plot or a deformed shape. That looks pretty. 
All right, but pretty doesn't mean much. We need to see some results here. So we'll come down here, nodal solution, degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. And we got, uh, we got to break this up into two sections. So we got displacements, and then we'll have rotations down here. So we look at displacements first. Click OK. We see no displacement of 1 and 3. But we have displacements in inches uh, at node 2. So negative 0.3 times 10 to the minus 3 inches there. All right, so we can see those. And let's come back here and look at rotations. Right, so this one's essentially zero, about the x-axis, 15, essentially zero about the y-axis, and then here about the z-axis, uh, we got radians of 0.219 times 10 to the minus 2 radians there. All right, and now let's come down here also to the reaction solutions, and we'll just go OK with that. And we got uh, 579, negative 579, node 3, and the rest of our values there. All right. So uh, that was the main things we're looking for. Let's also do some other stuff here. I want to look at the stresses that we have here. So a little bit different than last time. We don't hear define table. We've done this before. I'm going to click add. This is where things are going to change. We're going to look at the uh, we want the stress in the – make sure I get this right here. We've got the stress on the Y side, and we actually want the uh, – of the beam, and we want the top, so the positive side, the top of the beam. All right, so we'll come in here and we'll slide down. This is a sequence number. It's SMC, SMIC, SC. Uh, for the top side, it's 32, comma 37. And we'll hit apply there. And if we want to look at stress uh, on the Y uh, of the beam on the bottom side, so this is the bottom side of the beam, the negative Y side of the beam, slide down here, sequence number, and SMISC, and it's going to be 33, comma 38. Click OK. And just to add one more here. We got the axial uh, direct stress in the beams or yeah, in the elements is SMISC and it's going to be 31, comma 36. So you get all these sequence numbers if you want to use these to look up specific stresses there. So close that out and we're going to view list element table. We'll select those three we just created and click OK. All right, so we got stresses and we got the axial stress. So again, this is on the top part of the beam elements. This is on the bottom part of the beam elements. And this are what we have for the axial stresses. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this was helpful in looking at uh, how we can analyze frames and ANSYS. Thanks.